Now we turn to Russia's role in the Ukraine crisis and a conversation with a key player in Moscow's relations with the world after the collapse of the Soviet Union. Chief Foreign Affairs Correspondent Margaret Warner has the story. Weekend clashes across eastern Ukraine mark just the latest flashpoints in a struggle over that nation's future. Ever since pro-Western demonstrators ousted President Viktor Yanukovych, a Russian ally, in late February. For those protesters and the transitional government now in charge in Kiev, Ukraine's future lies with Europe and the West. But for many in Ukraine, especially in the heavily Russian-speaking East, Vladimir Putin's Russia and echoes of Ukraine's Soviet past hold more appeal. President Putin used such sentiments to justify the invasion and annexation of Crimea. Putin has made clear the pride of place he feels Ukraine holds in Russia's identity. But he also argues that the post-Cold War expansion of the West's military alliance, NATO, is spurring his actions in Ukraine. Since the Soviet Union dissolved 23 years ago, NATO's ranks have swelled to encompass many former Warsaw Pact satellite states in Eastern Europe and three former Soviet republics in the Baltics. During a televised call-in show last month, Putin charged this expansion represented a broken promise by the West and a threat to Russia. When the infrastructure of the NATO military bloc is approaching our borders, it raises certain questions for us. We have to take some steps in response. If we don't do anything, they will drag Ukraine to NATO and tell us that it's not our business. To explore Putin's motivations in Ukraine, I sat down last week with Andrei Kozarev, Russia's first foreign minister for five years after the Soviet Union dissolved in 1991. Andrei Kozarev, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Let's start with Ukraine. What do you think President Putin is after in Ukraine? He thinks that uh, this revolution which happened in Ukraine was uh, going into the wrong direction, that is kind of Western direction, and it was, according to him, even instigated, uh, if not directly or indirectly, by the West. And that's why he thinks that this will lead to uh, increase of Western influence in Ukraine as opposed to Russian. President Obama likes to talk about finding win-win solutions. Do you think that is possible with President Putin in addressing the Ukraine issue? Difficult. Probably they mean different things uh, when they speak of win-win solution. Uh, I guess for uh, President Putin and for his type of people, uh, the win-win situation would be like a formal or informal uh, division, agreement that this part is your part of influence, the Western part of influence, and this part is our uh, uh, in zone of influence. So for, I think for them, that would be a win-win situation. For President Obama, it's, it's a little bit unclear what he means, and that's uh, what bothers me. Are you saying that you think American policy toward the Ukraine crisis has been unclear? I think uh, the policy was uh, kind of a little bit different in words and not followed up by deeds. If you call something aggression, this kind of term, which is the strongest, should be followed by something. But those, what they call sanctions, they don't match with this word. So that's the problem. Empty threats and uh, empty promises, they are very, very confusing and counterproductive. How much of what Putin is doing in Ukraine do you think is driven by NATO's expansion eastward? Russia feels duped by the West or that the West took advantage of its weakness in the early 90s and violated promises and assurances not to move this military alliance ever closer to Russia's borders? Well, I think uh, my, my outlook uh, 
uh, of the world and uh, my assertion of the NATO alliance is very different from that because I don't think that NATO is an enemy of Russia in the first place and uh, I think that recreation of the enemy image in NATO that it was a big mistake and that's the core of the problem. So if you see that NATO is an enemy, of course, inclusion of new members into enemy alliance is a threat. Advancement of uh, enemy alliance, alliance to your frontiers is a threat. That's what President Putin says, that the enemy is, adva is advancing. Why do you think what he's doing in Ukraine is so apparently appealing and popular with the Russian public? Well, you know, th there is a, a big force of propaganda, let's face it. Uh, it's very strong instrument, especially if you control 99% uh, of the media and especially if you control TV, which is still, uh, to a large extent, the channel to com uh, of communication to the people in Russia. So uh, the propaganda machine is, uh, has proved to be very effective recently. Do you think it also speaks to something in the Russian soul? You don't think there's a strain of kind of chauvinism or nationalism? No, I don't believe in chauvinism uh, in Russia. And the Russian people are not driven, I'm pretty much convinced, by this kind of racial or nationalistic in that terms. But yes, they are vulnerable to anti-Western propaganda, and again, it all fits into the narrative that there is enemy, the West, the NATO, the United States, and the enemy is advancing. That's what Russian people react to. So far, the U.S. and the EU have imposed limited targeted sanctions on individuals in Russia. Are those effective at all? They evidently hit uh, a few people, but it's too small number of people, and some of them, most of them actually, are not public figures. And um, the problem is that, um, you know, the propaganda portrays the West uh, as an enemy, while Russian uh, ruling class m lives there in the NATO zone. They have villas, they have uh, bank accounts, uh, by proxy so, or directly. You mean in Europe or in the U.S.? Yes, Europe, U.S., where mostly in uh, French and Italian Riviera, in London, in New York, Miami. So if you want to convey something, you should convey to Duma members, and those Duma members, they voted, actually, for yes. Uh, for, the, for the actions in Ukraine, both uh, Crimea and Ukraine in general. So for the West to, 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 look, uh, to look credible, these guys should understand that they did something wrong, or they did not. In that case, they are welcome to uh, spend vacation and, at their villas in the West. So, I mean, there should be some consistency. Is it difficult for you, who come to the States a lot because you have a son here in school, to speak frankly about what you think President Putin is doing? In a sense, yes, because, you know, you have to uh, be mindful of the uh, so-called patriotic uh, fever, which is today in, in Russia, and uh, it will pass, uh, it will uh, kind of come to normal so sooner uh, rather than later. But uh, in time of kind of hysteria, you should be uh, mindful of that situation. And I want to keep my channels open to try to help to moderate uh, the situation. So, yes, you have to be uh, very careful. Former Foreign Minister Andrei Kozarev, thank you. Thank you.